Welcome to my second slime stone video. In this video, I'll explain some basics of observerless and honeyless flying machines and showcase some engines I made. So, you probably know this flying machine. Let's see how we can make it observerless. First, the piston pushing part. We can make something like this. It's very simple. So just with this circuit we can already make some engines. So first this one, it is relatively small, it uses two pistons, but it is also pretty slow. And there's also this one, it is a bit bigger, uses three pistons, however it is also faster. Okay, next let's see how we, we can make a pulling circuit. So with observers we can make something like this. It's very simple. And without observers we can make something like this. So here the redstone block power the sticky piston which will extend, but also this normal piston which will push the redstone block and deactivate the sticky piston. So as you can see, yeah. <coughs> so with these two circuits we can make a proper observerless engine. It is the same speed as normal regular engines in better condition. By the way, keep in mind, the redstone block powering uh, the sticky piston doesn't have to be the same as the redstone block powering the piston pushing it. It can be two separate redstone blocks, just make sure the piston pushes both. As you can see here, it might be more convenient for you. Now, let's say you want to make a flying machine that works a bit like this. Well, you totally can, as I did here. You could even attach two pistons like this and they would fly with it. I think it's pretty cool. Next, let's see how we can chain uh, observer as circuit. So with observers for the pushing, you do something like this. It is very simple. And without observers, we can make something like this. It is also very simple. Now for the pulling, with observers, it's very convenient. As you can see. However, without observers, it is a little bit trickier. As you can see here, it's too wide. And that you can do it, for example, like this. There are many ways. But that's the first way I found. Okay, so by chaining, pushing, and pulling, I made this horizontally expandable slow engine. I used a design a bit different for chaining the pulling. I used an L shape here. But yeah, it works pretty well. And I'm quite proud of it. Okay, next here is a fast engine. This one moves at 2.5 meters per second. I believe this concept was first made by Samrad. However, I actually developed this without seeing his design, but both are extremely similar. The theoretical maximum 
the theoretical maximum speed you can achieve on better condition would be 5 blocks per second. However, it's practically impossible and I think 2.5 blocks per second is the maximum that has been made. Next, I made a flying T flip flop so we can break the obsidian and it will stop moving. We can stop it and activate it. Next, I got two one block engines. This one moves at the opening of the chest. And this one moves at the closing of the chest. Okay. Next, I got a start-stop flying machine. So, to start it, you have to open and close this chest. And to stop it, you have to open this chest. Start it. and stop it. Next I got a one block T flip flop. So when I open this trap chest it will ch change state and move one block backwards. I, I don't know what these flying T flip flop could be used for but it's pretty cool I guess. Next, I got a pause fly flyer, so you can it moves until you open the chest. Yeah, and when you close the chest, it will start moving again. Moving again. Just don't have to open it while it's moving. And finally, the last engine is a missile. So it will move forward until it hits a wall. This one can go through four thick walls. And then it will explode and hopefully destroy the wall and or cause some damage to it. As you can see, this TNT gets lit. And yeah, it works pretty well. But okay, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.